I'm going to say this. I need it to be proved. Over the years, I have seen every iteration of, of Katie hairstyles, as, as have many. I would say this might be the most volu- voluminous, voluminous, <laughs> bounciest I've ever seen it uh, as Katie joins us. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. <laughs> I told the story. I told the story about how you freaked me out when you said FaceTime. Honestly, I didn't have time to tell you when we were on the phone. I thought it was because you said FaceTime me and it was before your interview. Remember uh, what was when Jade was like two and she gave you that giant black eye? Yeah. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was something no, like that. It wasn't even two. She gave it to me this summer. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. wasn't just last summer? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It yeah. still hurts. That's I think she <laughs> fractured a bone in my face. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. I thought Offensive it was something like out. that. And then she, and then, like I said, you answered and you're like smiling and waving your head around. I'm like, did you, did you, do you have a concussion? <laughs> and then, yeah. I, and then just to bring it all home, because Jay, by the way, first question Jason asked, so are we going to get her on StreamYard? Yeah, no. I wanted to see the, the hair. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm in my bathrobe, and I don't think people need to see that. I we are too. Yeah, I literally just Facetimed you, but she's—it's not like Katie's rolling around in a skimpy bathrobe. She has like a—correct me if I'm wrong—it looked like you had two bathrobes on. Um, I have a onesie on and a bathrobe. Yeah, so it's not—I mean, you're more covered up. <laughs> you're like you're like a mummy with the face <laughs> out. Whatever. Exactly, which is why I opted for the phone call. This is my time to sit out in the rain on my patio and drink my coffee. I don't want to see your face. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Katie, first question, because we, we, we got to get to Kings and stuff, but we, we were having this conversation earlier, and uh, Mark Jones even piped in via text. He was listening uh, about how he accessorizes. I just got back from England. I was there for nine days. And I'm a guy, which means I can wear like, you know, I can bring like one suit where it's over and over again. Right. Yeah. You're a girl. And so you've got to wear like every single night has to be a new outfit. Right. And so I'm kind of obsessed with like, how do you pack for a trip like this? Like how many bags are you taking? Yeah. Uh, I'll probably take three. I'll take one with all my clothes for work and one with other stuff. And then I've, I've started working out so like one with workout clothes yeah so i don't know i it's different guys can like you know i don't i don't know if people even notice but i only wear an outfit one time per season like i won't repeat outfits and i put a little um like little tag on it so i know if i've worn it or not but guys i feel like they can just wear the same suit yep. multiple yeah. times change the shirt yep. change the tie we whatever yep and no one really knows. I don't even notice. So one per so I don't season. Know. It's my yeah yeah. Where do you keep? I've been. I've seen your well, house. Not quite where, eighty two, but yeah. Where the hell do you keep all your stuff? Yeah, I bought three IKEA closets and put them in my garage so that I could put my work clothes in there. Now, will you wear? Will you recycle some of them next year? Like, will you bring back? Just yeah. Any- oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't buy a new wardrobe every year. I, I'm not made of money. Um, yeah. No, I've built this wardrobe up since 20, uh, 2006, 2006. When I first got here, I started building it and the sizes have changed over the years. Some things I can't wear anymore. Um, the joy of having children um and being lazy and not working out but yeah no it's it's it it gets it gets tedious it gets annoying to be honest it really does i'd imagine katie that you almost need a bag for your shoes Mm -hmm. i mean to match outfits how much of a challenge is that on the road i'll generally take like i'll probably take three pairs of shoes on this trip and just you know like uh they'll go with multiple outfits yeah well nobody can see your shoes though so why do you like why not just take one yeah, I mean, that's a very valid point. And normally what I do is, because a lot of times in arenas, we're high, we're not low. So we'll do our our sit-down or our stand-up interview uh, where we sit down <laughs> on the floor, and then we have to go up the stairs. Yeah. And so um, sometimes I won't even put on a pair of heels because I'm like, that is a trek. It's a dangerous set of stairs. But most of the time I'll wear them, and then I'll, I'll – either wear them for the whole game or I'll change out of them. I mean, this is like hard hitting stuff right now. Well, you just revealed that usually you guys are, you guys, you just revealed that usually you guys are high at the arena. So Katie Christensen (laughs) joining us right now. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, la last thing, and we'll wrap it up. When when the baggage handlers or whoever it is that's in charge, because I know you guys fly charter, when they see you coming, like are they like cracking their knuckles and like stretching? Or do you have more luggage than anyone else on the plane? I don't. I don't, I mean, no, I don't because just alone with all the stuff that they have to take, do you realize that the team takes their own water? No. Yeah. Boxes and boxes, like cases of water go on the plane. And then, you know, like for this trip, and I found this out last time, we'll take a bunch in the beginning, but then they'll get shipments to the hotel of this specific water that they drink. <laughs> Is it Fiji? Because it would be Fiji no, for me. It's no, not. no uh, it's not. We have questions from the text line uh, and the chat room. Do you keep one loss records for your outfits? I do not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's interesting. Here's yeah. a question. You would. Do, I would 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Have you burned that orange one that you wore on the opening night a few years ago against the Suns? That is like a special edition, like black label or whatever it is, like Ralph Lauren. I will never burn that. I don't fit into it anymore, but. <laughs> I don't think that was a question from the text line. I feel like that was Dave's What are you question. talking about? <laughs> don't pay, don't pay attention to that. Stuff. Oh, okay. All right, ask a King's question. All right, I'll ask a King's question. Katie, we saw um, a fantastic version of Harrison Barnes um, the other night. I don't know that anybody would expect that every night, but that sure was great to see. Um, one, I guess, what did you see to lead up to that? I mean, they really featured him and he took advantage of that. And can we see more of that? Yeah, I think that, you know, this is kind of an interesting question because Mike Brown has been asked about play calls <clears throat> and things like that in the past. And usually Mike doesn't call plays. He really lets them kind of, you know, flow and he'll call some plays, but it's not like a consistent thing. But what I do know is he'll, he'll call a, like a, a few in the beginning, right? Like he'll start the game with some looks. And a lot of the times Kevin Herter is the one that gets like the first shot of the game. Um, he's trying to get shooters going, that kind of thing. And um, I don't know if he started out trying to feature HB, um, but, you know, he got good looks early on and sometimes it's, it's really, it may not be what they're looking for, but it's what, you know, the defense is giving and he was super aggressive from the beginning and they're just really good about featuring, you know, the hot hand. Um, he had a fantastic, you know, first half of the game was a little bit, you know, third quarter, if I remember correctly, was a little bit quiet and then he got going later, but you know, HB is such a pro and he understood like the situation four losses in a row they really needed it they needed someone to step up he got it going early and then he just remained aggressive there's times where people feel like he's like the wilting flower of the starting five and he's not you know he might get four shots and it's like how is he getting four shots you know um so yes i agree to a certain extent he has to be more aggressive in some situations but sometimes it's just the flow of the game and how it's going. And I will tell you what, Sadiq Bay is probably still having nightmares about Harrison Barnes because he just brutalized him in about every way possible. Katie hmm. Christensen joining us. So they beat Atlanta, swept Atlanta, and that's a team they rarely beat. Uh, I'm sure you're incredibly aware of this more than most, but we've been spending a lot of time this week on the insane road trip uh, and, and really road period that the Kings are taking two home games over the next calendar month. And you just got back from a long road trip. A five gamer. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen, uh, more than your share of road trips. Uh, I, I know people go, well, they're on private planes and they stay in five star hotels and they do. And they do. Uh, but you know, it's away from family. It's traveling. It's different time zones. It, it does take a human toll, but, could this be something maybe that they're looking for? Could this be that that bonding, get away from home, get out there and right whatever has been wrong seemingly over the last few weeks with this team? So there's multiple things to say about kind of the statement and the question you just asked. I picked the top yes, two. It's, it's brutal to be on the road. Yeah, you're on private planes. Yeah, you're in five-star hotels. But you arrive in a city like, well, you know, they're, they'll, they'll go to Golden State. Then after that, leave for Dallas. 
Um, and you know, it's not very often that you stay overnight in a hotel after a game, you fly out right after you go to the next city. Um, and you know, you're getting in about two in the morning, like your time is so incredibly like wacky on the road. You're in different time zones. Like it's, it's not, yeah, all of the, the comforts of the travel are there, but the schedule is brutal in terms of your sleep schedule and your recovery schedule. And you're, when you're at training table, which is, you know, when they go and get treatment and all that stuff, like it is, it's a very scheduled out methodical thing, meals, all that stuff, practice, shoot around, film, walk through your time is really accounted for on the road. But I do recall playing um, being on the road was a great time to really bond and, and do stuff together. Cause you're not really doing that at home, right? You've got your families, you've got your, you know, res- adult responsibilities that you manage and maintain. And on the road, there's a certain freedom in the sense that you don't have to deal with kind of the, the details of life. Right. So that can help to a large degree, but, you know, I look at, I look at this last stretch and that four game losing stretch and, and Philly, they got their, their butts kicked. They got it handed to them. Right. Um, the next three games, the next three losses were really games that they should not have lost. That's on them. Right. It's not because they got outplayed. They gave it away in various, you know, Milwaukee, it was the free throws in overtime. Um, and then the next game was Phoenix. They had a, what, a 22 point lead in the fourth quarter and just completely allowed a change in defense. Phoenix going small to stall out their offense. Um, and then Indiana, same situation. You're up big. You let them back in. You weren't able to hold on to the lead. So those are all games that I feel like they should have won. And if they'd won two of the three, I don't think we'd have the same feeling right now as we do, um, even though they're coming off a win against Atlanta because they're going on this road trip. So I'm, I'm hoping, and I'll be honest, I, ha- I know the first two games. I've got to look at the schedule <laughs> for packing and weather, but it is a long one. I know we go to Miami. I think we go to Cleveland. Um, I know the first two is Golden State, Dallas. Um, after that, I don't know. And it's just, and I, I know that, you know, we're basically not home until very much until March. Um, I try to take it like one trip at a time. I know that, you know, we had five, we came home for two, we go out for seven. I think we come home for two. You're going into the all-star break, all this stuff. So it's just a really chaotic part of the schedule. And the challenge for them, you guys, is going to be figuring out a way to, to win and close out on the road um, because that can be really hard to do in, you know, other people's arenas. So, you know what, take on the challenge right now and then, you know, come March, you're going to really have to try and dominate at home. Golden State, then you go to Dallas, as you said, Memphis, Miami, Indiana, Chicago, Cleveland. Uh, you come home for Detroit, Denver. Then you're back on the road, Oklahoma City, Phoenix, Denver. You're back for one, San Antonio, then on the road to L.A., (laughs) back for one against Miami, then on the road to Denver and Minnesota, back for one against Chicago, and then back on the road against L.A. That takes you to March 7th. I want to... Yeah, it's depressing, isn't it? uh, Well, you know, I mean, hey, first world problems. It's depressing for me because I got to pack. I know, right? Yes. Yeah, you got to fly private planes and do a dream (laughs) job and Uh, get per diem. Um, I want to just real quick, let's do a quick back and forth uh, because I I want I think this is interesting and forgive me if I'm wrong, fans uh, and listeners. Uh, I actually think this is kind of interesting. Just I'm going to ask you a few questions. Just walk me through real quick. So you guys will play in San Francisco um, game, let's say ends around 930. So what time do you generally what time would you say on average wheels up would be after that game? Um, well, they're actually staying the night in Golden State that night, but normally after a game, um, it'll be anywhere between like 11 and 1130 at night. Okay. So you're up at 1130. Let's see here. Let's look at, uh, for example, Dallas, let's say they leave that night. So you get into Memphis at, at, I don't know, Dallas to Memphis, let's say that's two in the morning. You get off the plane. I assume you get on buses to the hotel. But am I correct also in assuming that you you probably have an envelope with your hotel key and number on it and whatever you get to your room again, I've never experienced this before, so i'm I'm walking this through with the with the listeners here. You get to your room. Am I correct in assuming that you get to your room without your baggage except for maybe something you carried on with you? So then you have to kind of wait for your baggage yeah. to be delivered? 
Yeah, generally. Um, and, you know, like you can go downstairs and wait for the, for the, it's a moving truck that has, that brings all the luggage. You can wait for your bags and then take them up yourself, or you can let, you know, the, the um, baggage guys bring them up. Um, like on this trip, I probably won't wait because I'm going to have three bags and the two bags that I carry onto the plane, you know, it's a lot to, it's pretty comical, um, to see it. Cause I have waited and done it and it's, it's a lot to manage, but yeah. And I think the thing is, is like, oddly enough, and from everyone I've talked to and I'm, you know, on the staff side of things, it's super hard to fall asleep. Once you get to the hotel, it might be four in the morning before you're able to kind of fall asleep. So it's like, yeah, why not? Like wait for your bags to come because, you know, you're definitely not, you know, getting into the hotel and immediately laying down and able to fall asleep. And, 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 and then when's generally so 4 a.m. and then I'll finish here. So 4 a.m., whatever, when generally is like team breakfast, the first thing that people need to get to? So most of the time it's a shoot around. Okay. And what, the, what they'll do is they'll have like a, a brunch lunch for like a two hour time period after that. And so on the way to shoot around, they always have these, these breakfast bowls that are available for the players that they can grab and, and take and eat on the way to shoot around. And they have shoot around film, come back. Um, and then you've got that like two hour window or whatever to, to get food and eat. And then they'll go and nap and, you know, do their pregame routine. Yeah. Yeah, that nap time is mm-hmm. that's the sweet spot for the players. They definitely yeah. have to get that. Um, yeah, Katie, I want to ask you about a couple of things that we've seen some teams do that, like if we go back to the Phoenix game, Kings played some of their best basketball by far, and we've talked before about the the last six minute meltdown where they went small and mm-hmm. unique. They were able to do that. So um, we saw the zone a little bit by Atlanta, and I thought for about a four to five minute stretch, it kind of bothered the Kings, and then they figured it out. So as as they've seen some things to try to challenge. Um, their offense, how do you think they're adapting with that going forward? So the zone situation, they're a much better team handling the zone this season than they were last season. And, you know, teams like Portland that play majority zone, you've got Utah that plays a lot of zone. You've got some teams that feature it in a in a bigger way. For me, the, the most baffling thing about struggling with the zone is, and I've heard Mike scream at them um, from the sidelines, is you can run your player-to-player, you know, offense against a zone. You just have to shift uh, kind of how you set screens, the angles that you set screens. You have to make sure that you're constantly getting someone to the middle of the paint, that free throw line area. That area is where you break down the zone, and that opens up everything else. So if you're just whipping the ball around the outside – you're playing into the the hands of the zone defense. It's stalling you out. Um, I feel like they've done a better job this year of handling it. The the baffling thing to me about the Phoenix game when they went small and they put Kevin Durant on um, uh, Demontis Sabonis, it's crazy to call that small ball because Kevin Durant is six nine six the same right. size as Domas. He just doesn't play in the center, you know, ever. Um, and what upset me about that situation and was so baffling to me is this is not a team that chooses to isolate mismatches on a very regular basis. It's just not within their offense. They've talked about it a bunch of times, but that is not how they approach it. They're not trying to find the, they call it the Mickey. You're not trying to find the Mickey and take advantage of it on a consistent basis. There are teams that will do it every single time down the floor. Um, But the problem with doing that is that it stalls out the rest of your offense. You're not moving. You're, you're trying to, to keep the matchup that you want. And then you're just ISO ball. This is not an ISO ball team. And so the fact that they continue to try to go to that and um, kind of go through DeMontis Sabonis and try to get him to score in that Phoenix game down the stretch really was confusing to me because if you just run your stuff, they're go- you're still going to have mismatches throughout because you're, you're playing against a small ball lineup. Um, so I think that in those situations, they kind of go back, they look at the film, they talk about what went wrong, and in theory, the next time you face something like that, it's not going to have the same effect. So, again, you know, you read the schedule earlier, Dave. They're going to face Phoenix here again. I mean, we've played them so many freaking times this year. Between Phoenix and New Orleans, you know, five times, ten of our games are against And Golden Phoenix. State, throw that man. <laughs> Yeah, Golden State, but Golden State that, you know, they played in the preseason. So I think that feels that way 
Um, we played them a lot early on, but we're still only playing the Warriors four times versus five times East yeah, Phoenix, yeah. New Orleans. So, you know, I and it's crazy in that sense. I, I think that the Kings have played Phoenix incredibly well. We obviously know New Orleans has been a just horrendous matchup for them this season. We don't play New Orleans again, I think, until the beginning of April. So we'll see how that final game goes. But, yeah, I mean, Jason, there's been some things that you can take out of it. Um, we'll see if other teams try to do the same thing. And just it's about, okay, then we're going to learn how much they um, they took from that lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they play uh, Golden State. Thankfully, this will be the fourth and final time they play Golden State here in the regular season. Good to get them out of the way before the end of January and all the emotions that go with it. All right, well, good luck. Uh, Have a good call tomorrow night, and uh, make sure, you know, you do all the stuff. You turn the... Turn the hot water heater to vacation, you know, <laughs> get all this. Well, I've got dogs here, so somebody has to be at the house. So uh, yeah. My house is not empty. Will, yeah, you, will, exactly. you be spend, will you be spending your day cooking uh, cooking up all the dog food while you're gone for them to be peaceful? Yeah, about? so I've got two weeks of dog yeah. food to make. Yeah. yeah, I do have dog food to make today, but I have it down to a science base. So yeah. Most spoiled dogs on the planet. That's right. Why take five minutes to do something when you can take 30? It's Katie Christensen <laughs> joins us each and every Wednesday. Thanks. You're so lucky that I am not there to physically just smack you upside the head well, right now. At least the audience would benefit because they could see your voluptuous and uh, <laughs> uh, bouncy hairstyle. I don't think it's voluptuous. It's I think you're volu- looking for oh, voluminous. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay. I'm going to turn red. Talk to you later. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> Jesus. Want to get away? Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's Katie Chris. Voluminous. Mm. We'll take a break when we come back. Uh, Leon Lee will join us. Uh, Hall of Fame inductee.